But UFC lightweight James Krause is joining us right now. And again, he is actually in Baltimore getting ready to corner one of his guys. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for uh, having me on. I appreciate it. I appreciate you joining us and being patient through those commercials. I know some of them, you know, can be a little bit long to listen to. Some can be a little depressing, yeah. too. You, you you got lucky you didn't get any of the depressing ones. Yeah. Well, again, uh, James, you are in Baltimore at UFC 172. You're going to be cornering one of your grindhouse MMA teammates, that being Tim Elliott, who has a huge fight ahead of him, taking on Joseph Benavides. Uh, and how, how's the atmosphere down there in Baltimore? Uh, it's, I mean, it's 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 pretty fun, you know. Uh, Tim Tim's a fun guy to be around. You know, he's not like the, uh, you know, he's not like a super intense guy. And and Joe's the same way. You know, they're both fun guys to be around. They don't uh, they don't get caught up in the fight aspect of it. You know, it's a competition for them. And they can, you know, they can be friends before and 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 compete and then be friends after. It's you know, so it's it's pretty cool. It's chill. You know, it's good. Uh, you know, Tim feels great. He's ready to go, and uh, we're excited about the matchup. Now, James, I saw uh, on your Twitter when you arrived in Baltimore a couple of minutes after you got there, you had already seen two guys fighting on the street. Uh, can, can you delve into that little combat you saw? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we literally, we we checked in the hotel and uh, we're like, let's go grab something to eat. So on our, we're, we're walking like four blocks away to, to grab something to eat. And uh, we just see these, <laughs> these two guys, just, I don't even know what they were fighting over, but uh, it wasn't really like a, it was more of a, a scuffle, if you will. It wasn't much of a fight, but these guys uh, were getting after it, and, and it was it was rather entertaining to watch, I guess. Wait, was it you and Tim? I'm sorry, what's that? Was it you and Tim Elliott without, that saw it? Yeah, yes. It would have been really cool if the two of you just like stopped there and, and you did like play-by-play and color commentary on a street fight. <laughs> I actually, I've recorded some of it, but it's not very eventful, so it's not really worth posting. All right, all right. At least it wasn't, because we wouldn't have to have either. You have to jump in there and, you know, police things on the streets of Baltimore right before a fight. Baltimore's a rough city. Uh, Is this your first time there? Um, in actual, in Baltimore, yes. I, uh, I've been, I I was, I'm from, well, not really from, I've lived in D.C. for about a year. I went to Northern Virginia uh, College there, so. Uh, I'm from the area, just I've never actually been here in Baltimore. Well, coming up for your own fight in the future here, it's just next month, you're fighting Jamie Varner at UFC 173, May 24th here in Las Vegas. So we'll probably get the opportunity to meet you in person. Uh, But, uh, man, this uh, has to be kind of special for you. I mean, I know you were with the WEC and fought – with uh, in Las Vegas while you were under that banner, but now this is your first UFC fight in, in uh, Sin City in the fight capital. How does that feel to you? Yeah, it's, I mean it's pretty cool. You know, I just I have to I gotta treat it like just another fight, and uh, you know do like I would like I would do any other uh, event. You know, whether it be back home or in Vegas or wherever it be. You know, I just I have to treat it what it is, and uh, you know I prepare the same no matter who it is or what it is. So. Uh, I'll be I'll be ready for it. You know I'm I'm super excited for the matchup. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, a great a great stylistic matchup for the fans and uh, you know for for myself as well. So I'm I'm really excited to to test my skills and see you know where where exactly I match up in the division. Well, let's talk about that that set of skills. I mean, you're facing a really uh, grizzled fighter in Jamie Varner. He's a former WEC champ, but yet you have 14 first round finishes on your resume 13 of those wins being by submission five by knockout uh G- jamie varner is always very game when he steps into the cage what are your initial thoughts on his style and, and taking on a veteran like him uh well i mean i think i consider myself uh, a veteran right up there with him i mean overall i've had i've had almost 50 fights now so you know i'm no i'm no new guy to the game by any means uh you know i He's he is uh, he's been around for a long time. He knows the the tricks of the trade, and I expect to see that. You know, everybody in the UFC is good, so it's it's you know it's no different. Uh, I expect I expect him to come out and 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 be the best Varner. You know, he needs to be the best, you know, because I feel like he's he's uh, fighting for his job here. So I expect the absolute best uh, the best guy that that he's ever been before, and I'm I'm really excited for that. 
Awesome. And, you know, you took a while to get into the UFC's fold. I know that you fought on The Ultimate Fighter Season 15. Uh, you lost in that in elimination round to uh, Justin Lawrence. But now you've had, like you said, a six-year career. You've been with the WEC. You've been actually with RFA also. Um, being now in that main stage, being on the main card of a pay-per-view, what is that feeling like for you, making it you know, at that UFC level and having that pay-per-view, uh, being on that main card for the pay-per-view? Um, I mean, it's... <sighs> Like I said, it's 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 obviously very cool, you know, that they they think highly of me, me and they think highly of the matchup. Uh, but really, I have to I have to treat it, you know, just like it's another fight, and I can't, you know, I can't make it something. Uh, I can't add any more pressure to myself, you know. I don't. It, it's you know, at the end of the day, when whenever me and Jamie step into fight, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the last card on the or the last fight on the card or the first fight on the card, or the fight is in a barn somewhere, like, we're going to go out and we're going to fight. So there's no reason for me to, to sit here and, and think about, you know, the stage rather than the fight. You know, I, I just, I, I'm not going to add any extra pressure to myself, and uh, I have to treat it like another fight and uh, and go out and, and compete the way I know I can. I, I know I know I'm good. I know I can hang with, with anybody in the UFC, and, and like I said before, I'm really, really excited to, to for this matchup for the fans. You know, I I feel like it's a great fight. It's going to be exciting, um, and I, I'm stoked to see you know how it plays out for everyone. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is going to be a fun fight. It's definitely a fan friendly fight. Uh, we are talking to James Krause, who's taking on Jamie Varner at UFC 173. And James, you brought up the fact that Varner's back's against the wall here. Uh, you know, he, he, he's done well. He's had some great fights in the UFC, but, you know, coming off that nasty knockout, um, his back is definitely against the wall. Now, you, on the other hand, I wouldn't say your back's against the wall, but you have kind of a, a bad taste in your mouth after your last fight in the UFC. You, you came in with a, a head of steam, submitted Sam Stout, and then in the last fight with Bobby Green, uh, there was the low blows, the fight didn't go your way. Uh you have any? Are you, is that still in the back of your head? Do you kind of you dwell on that at all? Of what happened or the way you lost the fight? Uh, that you really didn't lose it. It was a low blow. Does that ever stick in your head? Um, I mean, yeah, it's, I think about it for sure, but it's not. You know, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not getting caught up with it. You know, I, I I feel like I'm fighting for my job too. You know, it's 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 the nature of the business. You know, if if you don't feel like you're fighting for a job, even if you're coming off a win. You know, you should probably think about doing something else because, you know, there's not much room for error uh, in the sport, let alone the UFC. There's even less in the UFC, you know. So I always feel like I'm fighting for my for my job, even though, you know, if I'm coming off a win or if I'm coming off a loss, you know, the, the green fight, you know, it, it was an unfortunate event that happened. It, you know, it did happen, though, and, and I can't I can't dwell on the past. I'm, you know, I'm pushing forward now and uh, and uh, I'm looking I'm looking way past that. I don't you know, I don't really I don't really think about it too much anymore. It's you know what I mean? It's, it's done. It's gone. And now I have, I have a new face I need to worry about. And that's, that's what I've been focused on. We actually had a caller, Mike, earlier in the show. He had uh, heard that you were coming on the show. And he wanted to know if you – he wanted us to ask you specifically if you would ever entertain the idea of getting in there and going against Bobby Green again. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, 100%. I mean, yeah, why not? Absolutely. The fans were robbed of a great fight. You know the, uh, yeah. I mean, one hundred percent. I think that fight is is fireworks. I mean, I love that matchup. I love, you know, fighting the style of Bobby Green. Yes, one hundred percent. I think that's a, a hell of a fight. Yeah. Now, um, are you full on in a training camp right now, or does that start as soon as you get back from Baltimore? No, I've I've been in I've been in uh, training camp, and I'm training while I'm out here in. Uh, you know, I'm I'm getting great looks. I'm already in, in fantastic shape. I mean, I I feel I, I I would fight next week. You know, no problem. I feel great already. So yes, I'm in the middle of the train camp and and uh, it's going awesome. I'm injury free. You know, I, I don't have anything to worry about. I feel really good and uh, you know physically, I feel strong. Um, I feel good, man. I, I feel really good. I'm I'm definitely ready for this for this fight and uh, I'm actually you know looking forward to it. Uh, 
I wish he would come a little bit sooner even. <laughs> is it hard when you got a guy like, you know, Tim Elliott, he's fighting this weekend, which means he's peaking right now. He, he's at peak performance. Is it hard when you got a guy in your camp fighting at, a, like, a month apart? I know guys love when they have training partners fighting on the same card, but we had actually had Tim on, and he had said that he'd never want to fight on the same card as you because he'd lose his, his corner man. You know, so, like, is it tough in the training aspect when one is peaking and one is trying to hold back a little bit? Um, No, you just got to be smart with everything. You know, me and Tim are in different weight classes, so we don't, you know, we rarely spar each other. We grapple a little bit, Um, you know, but it's just it's just the nature of the game. There's always going to be somebody peaking while somebody else is just getting started in a camp. So it's kind of, you know, it's just kind of something you have to deal with. Um, You know, and I, I'm a big part of Tim's camp and, and vice versa. He's a big part of my camp, you know, and we just, we make it work for each other. You know, it's, uh, you know, we help each other out and, uh, we're, you know, we're really good friends outside of the gym too. So, uh, you know, it's not a big deal for us just to, you know, take some extra time and, and, and work on whatever we need to work on. Well, he had said that he'd never, uh, he wouldn't want to fight on the same card as you because of losing his corner, man. Same thing go for you. Um, you know, I, I know that Tim would never fight on the same card as me. So like, I, I try not to worry about, it. uh, I think I, I I think I could do it. Yeah, I, I think I could fight on the same card as him uh, for sure. Um, would I Would I like to? No, I I really wouldn't because there's so much so much emotion involved. You know, whenever I whenever I watch a, a teammate or something like that, you know, it's, uh, I would uh, I would much rather not do that. So uh, you know, but yeah, it's I, I would if I had to. I'd rather not though. I have one more question for you, James. Uh, I noticed on your UFC.com profile that you were only five credits short of getting a college degree. Would you ever yeah. go back, or are you going to try to finish that out somehow? I mean, there's so many online no. courses. No, absolutely not. Uh, college is the, probably the biggest waste of time I've ever had in my life. Uh, nothing, nothing that I'll ever do in my life uh, requires, requires college. You know, I, I fight now, and... and and I own, you know, I own a gym. I own, I own a couple of different businesses, and uh, I own a gym. I own an MMA promotion company. You know, I don't. There's absolutely nothing that I have any desire to do that would require me to have a degree. So, absolutely not. I think it was the biggest waste of time and money that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> there you go. Student loans, no fun. <laughs> you know, and and don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I I do believe in 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 higher education. You know, just I think I think college is extremely overrated. Uh, but don't I don't want people to confuse college with a uh, higher form of education. You know, my education has just become, you know, in the form of, uh, you know, business as far as running a martial arts gym and then, you know, fighting. And, uh, you know, it's, I, that's what I feel like my form of higher education is because I'm always, always trying to learn more. And, and you know, I, I was talking to Tim about this the other day. You know, in MMA, we've been doing this for so long. You know, the learning curve just isn't. It's not, you know, you don't learn a bunch of new stuff every day like you do when you first start. But for me in business, I learn new things every day. So it's super exciting for me, you know, to to learn new things in, in the business field of martial arts and stuff like that. So uh, I really enjoy that. And, uh, you know, like I said, that's that's my form of higher education is just learning new ways in business to, have, to succeed and, and how to compete in different ways other than fighting. You know, I still love fighting. It's still, still my, my passion and stuff, but... You know, let's be honest. I you know, we can't fight forever. You know what I mean? That's and there's nothing wrong with that. You just I, I want to set myself up for whenever fighting's over. Well, James, there are street smarts, there are book smarts, and in this game, there is fight smarts. And brother, it sounds like you've been blessed with all three. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Well, James, we are actually going to go ahead and head out to our last commercial break here, but we really, really appreciate your time. We wish Tim the best of luck here at UFC 172, and same, of course, goes for your fight, which is coming up here in Las Vegas, May 24th at the MGM. We're looking forward to seeing that scrap with you and Jamie Varner. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I appreciate it a ton.